Welcome back, beautiful and amazing human beings. This is Rukodowski of VRChange.org, and of course, I want to cover the breaking news and the major escalation happening in Syria right now with the news coming in of a Russian military plane being shot down over the coast of Syria, leaving 14 service members presumed dead. And that's why in this video, I want to try to make sense about what just happened, who is responsible, and what is next in this very dangerous proxy war with the escalating potential for a direct conflict between the United States and Russia. Now, before we begin, just know that this broadcast is made possible through you and your support on wearechange.org forward slash donate. And if it wasn't for you, this broadcast would not be here. Now, what just happened moments ago is very terrifying and something that we have been warning about and talking about as an independent news organization for a number of years now, specifically talking about the disaster scenarios that could unfold when you have major alliances and world powers against each other through a proxy war like we're seeing happening right now with one side having Syria, Iran, Russia, and China on their side going completely against the United States, NATO, Israel, and of course Saudi Arabia, which is financing Sunni Wahhabist rebels. And this was definitely exemplified just moments ago where Israel continued and launched more aggressive airstrikes on Syrian military targets that of course were very close to Russian military bases in the region, specifically going after many research and industrial sites run by the Syrian military. And from the photos and videos coming out, these were definitely major attacks on the Syrian military. At the same time, Russia detected missiles that were apparently launched from the French military forces along with Israel on the Syrian military. This, of course, sparked the Syrian and Russian air defenses to be activated and used during this attack. And again, for the people who are not paying attention or either watching the U.S. Western mainstream media need to be reminded that these attacks were carried out against the Syrian military forces who were mainly fighting against al-Qaeda, ISIS, al-Nusras, and other rebel groups who were mainly Wahhabist in that specific region that were specifically supported by the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia before. And of course, during this latest attack just moments ago, we found out that a Russian military plane was shut down with 14 service members on board. Now, according to the first initial reports that were brought to us by CNN, they are running headlines saying that the Syrian regime was the one that actually accidentally shot down this Russian military plane, accrediting this information to an anonymous U.S. official, which they did not name, specifically stating that this anonymous person from the government shortly after this incident and without investigation said, quote, the regime was actually trying to stop a barrage of Israeli missiles. A second official confirmed that Israel was responsible for the missile strikes on the Syrian regime and was inadvertently shot down by Syria regime anti-aircraft artillery. CNN's headlines, bylines, and tweets about the incident fail to even mention that it was Israel that launched this attack first. And of course, I am very skeptical of this story because firstly, who is this anonymous U.S. official? What evidence do they have? And how do they know so early on since this incident just happened? Who was directly responsible when there was missiles flying from both sides? And honestly, right now, it could be either party that is responsible for this shooting down of this Russian military aircraft, whether the Syrians or the Israelis. But with how fast this article came out and some other evidence coming out right now, the picture that this article portrays could be completely different. Now, here is some of the evidence that I found compelling against the CNN story because, yes, the Syrian military does have a missile defense system, which they were even bragging about on social media yesterday about. And these air defense systems, according to many sources, were unified with the Syrians and Russians that were working together hand in hand together with a major military operation against the rebel groups in that country. These Syrian and Russian defense systems have IFF antennas, systems that the Syrians and Russians operate, which of course tracks all the aircraft on radar with the IFF antenna, which helps identify friends or foe in the sky with the transponder that marks it on their radar system. How would the Syrian military that works with Russia is provided with Russian military equipment, how would they even target their own military aircraft during a military operation to be, quote, shut down? The likelihood and chances of that happening, other than a major blunder, are very unlikely. We are also getting reports that it was not only the Syrian, but also the Russian defense systems that were engaged over the city that was being bombed by the Israeli military 
and there's even reports of S-400 Russian defense systems launching missiles in the region, which would be the first time that this has ever happened. With, of course, many people claiming that the Russians were attempting to shoot down the Israeli F-16 fighter jet, which they believe was responsible for shooting down this Russian aircraft. And it's also important to understand throughout this whole entire incident, up until now, Israel is neither confirming nor denying them shooting down this Russian aircraft. So on one side, we have an article by CNN from an anonymous US official saying it was Syria. And on the other side, we have the evidence that we just provided to you in this video. So of course, as more information still comes to light, I wanted to ask you, who do you think is responsible for the downing of this Russian military aircraft? Was it a major blunder by the Syrian Russian defense systems? Or was it Israel, France, with CNN covering for them in order to avoid an international incident? Now, of course, as more information comes to light about this incident, we are going to be covering it very closely here on this independent news channel. But regardless of all that, this is still a major event and a major game changer for the larger proxy war that is unfolding between Russia and the United States inside of Syria. Again, a very dangerous situation and a very dangerous escalation, which some asshats are actually celebrating on Twitter. And even though 14 people are presumed to be dead, people who are getting their information from a CNN article from an anonymous, quote, U.S. official that has not presented or provided any information right after the incident are choosing to morbidly laugh at this event and choosing to uh, celebrate it, which is uh, pretty sickening no matter what side you stand on. Now, what's going to happen afterwards geopolitically will bring a confusing situation only to become more confusing. Obviously, there will be an investigation to see who was actually responsible for the shooting down of this Russian military aircraft. And this is definitely not the first loss that Russia has felt inside of Syria, where already a number of Russian mercenaries who were not officially with the Russian military were killed by U.S. airstrikes. Previously, before in 2015, the situation got very tense when Turkey, a NATO ally, shot down a Russian warplane. And of course, all of these incidences have led Russia to double down on their policy in Syria and engage the rebels even more afterward, which I believe will happen again after this incident, especially Especially in the province of Idlib, where just moments ago before this airplane was struck down, Turkey and Russia actually agreed to a buffer zone, a demilitarized zone, which of course put a hold on the all-out assault on one of the last rebel-held areas in Syria, Idlib, which has an estimated 10,000 Al-Qaeda members, which Donald Trump and Nikki Haley are trying to protect with their foreign policy. And now, after this incident, I definitely believe the buffer zone will be put into question and may be something that is never actualized, from my own assessments. With, of course, Russia trying to finish this proxy war as soon as possible, with the United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia trying to prolong it as much as they can. Ultimately, pushing for a perpetual state of war since... The United States, Israel, and Saudi Arabia lost their main geopolitical goal of ousting Bashar al-Assad, which, of course, the Iranians and Russians were able to keep in place. And again, for reporting on this conflict ever since it began, talking to people on the ground, looking at both sides of the story, this is just utterly idiotic for the United States and actually has no benefit but drawbacks, especially because the United States, because of this conflict, because of this attempt to overthrow Bashar al-Assad, ultimately grew and fostered ISIS along, of course, with the disastrous Iraq war, which helped breed that fire of destruction that is spreading all around the world in the Wahhabist churches that, of course, Saudi Arabia pays for and provides. And yeah, it's difficult to understand it because there's absolutely no benefit to us. And to know that our taxes are going to rebel groups where right now investigative journalists are finding American weapons, Israeli weapons, Saudi Arabian weapons in ISIS held territories, Al Qaeda held ter territories, Al Nusra held territories, territories of people that absolutely hate the Western ideologies want to attack them and their people with their global call for jihad. This is the side. This is the side that the United States is siding with, along with Israel and Saudi Arabia, which again, we've been talking about for a while. But even the video before this, we got into more concrete points, especially that recently came out in Bob Woodward's book, 
fear where he validates everything that we have been saying for a number of years now especially with trump's policy towards this which of course is not making america great again and until we let go of bipartisan bullcrap politics and call things for what they are and call wrongs out when they happen this will only continue more and try to convince me if i'm wrong but i am completely anti-war anti-us interventionalism and anti-human death because ultimately if you look at what's happening here it's just a big cluster pluck that's going absolutely nowhere except for more perpetual war and a bigger conflict that will only breed and foster more war with the help of the mainstream media that of course has their strings attached to the military industrial complex that makes a profit off this and other than them there's really no one else benefiting off of this again convince me if i'm wrong if you found this video helpful share it with your friends and family members thank you again so much for watching donating to us allowing this media organization to still be here to still have a voice especially in this new day and age of censorship deplatforming, demonetization algorithm changes and just basically the screw job by the big tech giants who don't want you to hear this message but somehow magically we're but somehow we're still able to be here and that's why i love you guys thank you again so much for watching stay tuned for more